Well, all right, welcome back. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, please, and thumb the video up. So this is just some real-time footage of the chassis for the Trippichet. Uh, if you want to see any of the parameters, you can go check it out in the uh, design portion of this video. But I believe I was running at 100 inches per minute with a step over of 20% and a feed rate, or not sorry, feed rate, a plunge depth of, I think, 0.05. I might have went 0.06. I um, can't remember exactly, but it was one of the two. Uh, quarter inch in mill bit. And then when uh, I did the pocket for the female receiver ports i guess you'd call them for where the side mount the for the sides plug in um which is the first tool path that you're seeing right now those there's six of those holes and that took me approximately 15 20 minutes to do those and the next tool path you're going to see which is where the sling is going to rest and the weight is going to to um swing through that pocketing tool path took me Maybe an hour and 20 minutes or so. Um, so all in all, it didn't take too long. And then I did some drilling tool pass, but I didn't show any of that here. And then lastly, you're going to see the, uh, the profile tool path, which didn't take long, maybe eight or nine minutes. Uh, quarter inch ML, again, 100 inches per minute. Plunge depth of 0.06 or 0.05. Because I went down half an inch, and I figured to save a thousandth of an inch and to save only save one tool path out of it i'd better off just shaving off that instead of doing a nine just do it in ten and uh be extra safe about it i really don't like to push the limits um if you've done this for any length of time you know how expensive these end mill bits are and i don't have the money to keep breaking them so i baby it um actually i was speaking with someone in the comments I don't know, a handful of months ago, a gentleman said he was getting the same machine. I think he said he was getting the same machine. I have to go back and read the comments. But I told him, you know, I run usually like... When I first started like profiling, I had nothing but problems. And so I was running at like 20 inches per minute on the profile passes. Uh, I've since stepped it up a little bit since I figured out adjusting the plunge depth and going shallower offsets. So I would go at a with an eight with a quarter inch and end mill, end mill I would run at an eighth of an inch plunge depth and then I would just go you know depending on what I was milling you know between twenty and sixty inches per minute uh, basically on profile tool passes only I really didn't have many issues on the pocketing tool paths or drilling tool paths or the V carve tool paths my main point of correction and, and problems that I've had have been with profile cuts. Going a quarter of the diameter of the tool. So with the quarter inch end mill, I run you know, about 0.06 ish, and on the plunge depth, and then I run at a speed of 100 inches per minute, and it works out great. Um, but as long as I don't go any deeper than a half an inch, once I start getting down to a half an inch in, my, in, in depth, that's when things start getting shaky. I start getting clatter. I start getting. Um, vibrations and I just it gets real hairy and I don't like to even do it so that's why with this particular profile cut that you're going to be seeing I only profiled down half an inch and then I just cut it out on my bandsaw just to eliminate any issues um, so and that brings me to another point people have asked me in my review videos you know how how I like the machine and you know in my review it didn't seem like you liked it very much and it's not a matter of not liking it okay I like the machine just fine my only issue with the machine is it's at the same price point as the what I view to be slightly better machines the Axiom the Lagunas I mean this machine it's six thousand dollars and for just a little bit more than that you can get one made from steel that has no wiggle in the gantry. You can run a, a half of an inch, call it, which is a big difference. When you're limited to a quarter inch, call it, it really restricts the material size. Sure, this thing has, I think, a six or seven inch Z axis, which is the thickness of your material. But the problem is, is if you want to do a profile cut on that, you're not going to be able to. 
you can't profile cut three inch material with a quarter inch end mill. Trust me. I mean, I, unless I mean, <laughs> if anybody has any pointers and anything you can tell me, but believe me, things get really shaky for me when I go more than two times the diameter of my tool. You know. So in other words, I don't profile cut anything thicker than a half an inch with my quarter inch end mill bit. One day I plan on replacing my spindle and getting something that can run the, I think it's the ER10, call it, the one that runs the half inch stuff. Because if I can get a half inch end mill in there, now you're removing some material and now I can cut clean through a one inch thick piece of wood. But until then, I'm not even going to mess around with it. It's not worth breaking any more end mill bits. I'm going to go slow and steady because, I mean, this is just my hobby. I do this for fun because I enjoy it. I love the smell of pine sawdust on my floor, oak sawdust on my floor, cedar, and redwood. So if I had 15 orders a day I had to knock out, then yeah, I mean, I would definitely be running a half inch. So for now, all I have is this quarter inch and I do love the machine. My, my beef is not with the machine. I don't really even have any beef with the company. I mean, it seems like it's been a great product. I have had very minimal problems with it. The only problems I've had have been of my own doing, for the most part. Nothing major has went wrong with it. My only concern, and the only reason I knocked it a little bit in the review, is because it's at the same price point of machines with the half-inch spindle. Or half-inch collets. And I know, you're saying you can upgrade that. That's true. You're right. For five or six hundred dollars, I can buy me a new spindle with a with a half inch collet. So you're right. But the point is, is those machines come with the spindle. So that's it. But anyone out there looking to buy this machine, it's fine. I mean, as long as you're not trying to make a business out of it, I think you'll be okay. Uh, and even with a business, I mean, you'll probably be okay. Just know that you're going to be limited to the thickness of the material and the speed in which you can knock out your projects. I think the gentleman who I was speaking with, I apologize, I should have wrote your name down before I started talking about this, but I think you're starting to see that it's kind of slow going, especially when you want to do, you know, something 20 by 10 with raised text. You know, you're talking two, three, sometimes four hours of chip out, you know, pocketing tool pass and stuff, so... You know, it's some of these take a while, and having a ha the ability to run a half inch end mill bit with an eighth of an inch end mill bit to clean up would really, really speed things along. So, well, anyways, hey, that's about it for this video. Um, this is just a little real time uh, just demo here. I'll be doing these every week. So again, the new schedule is. Uh, Sundays, I will be putting out the actual carving video. Tuesdays, I will be putting out real-time footage from the same video. And Thursday will be a new V-Carve Pro video. So, I'll design it on Thursday, I'll make it for Monday, and Tuesday you'll see some real-time footage of that build, or of that carve. So, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the box. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. Till the next video, I'm out.